Hi, it's Anika from Living For Later. In yesterday's video, we spoke about forgiveness. Today, we are going to talk about temptation. So stay tuned. Be blessed. So let's go on. It says, and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from the evil one. Okay, so when I make prayer a priority and I use this template, I recognize that prayer positions me for victory. So right here, Jesus says, pray. God, lead me not into temptation, but deliver us from evil one, the evil one. Now we know in James 1, 13 through 14, it tells us that when we are tempted, we should not say that we've been tempted by God because God doesn't tempt us, right? That it's really we're drawn away by our own lust. So right here, we know that it's not Jesus tempting us, but what, what it's really saying is, God, lead me to a place of victory. Deliver me from the devil. So when I find myself positioned in prayer, I really am getting built up to take a stance against the enemy and to have a place of victory. In the same book of James, it tells us, submit to God, resist the devil, and he will flee from you. Prayer is a form of submitting to God. So I can't expect to have victory over the evil one if I'm not connected to the victorious one through prayer. Sometimes we go on around and acting like, I don't understand why I don't have any victory over the enemy. How long have you been praying? Two minutes. Jesus understands. Yeah, he does. That's why the devil is gobbling you up, right? So if we want to have victory, we have to make prior prayer a priority. Praise God for all the books out there about how to fight the devil. But the main way is find yourself in prayer. Find yourself in prayer. That's how you get positioned to fight the enemy. And when you position yourself in prayer, you fight from a stance of victory because you're just reminded, oh, my daddy, my daddy got this, right? So I've been so filled up in prayer that when I come, I don't cower away from the enemy. I don't give in to temptation. I'm able to stand against it. 1 Corinthians 10, 13 says, the temptations in your life are no different from what others experience. It's not just you. And God is faithful. He will not allow the temptation to be more than you can stand. When you are tempted, he will show you a way out so that you can endure. So here it is. He's saying, deliver me from evil, right? From the evil one. And the scripture confirms this in 1 Corinthians 10, 13. God will deliver. He will provide the way of escape. I think sometimes the problem is we're not really looking for a way of escape. That's just, this, this is truth. You're not looking for a way of escape if you deliberately place yourself in the situation and then say, oh God, help me. He opened the door and you walk straight through it as opposed to turning around and walking out of it. So the scripture says right here, that he provides a way of escape and he will deliver you from the evil one. But, as the, the old saints used to say, God will keep you, but that's if you want to be kept, right? So you have to be honest with God. And, you know, again, I'm just learning. Sometimes I laugh as I'm talking to God because I'll come, you know, with the first tear of prayer and you're saying things. And it's like, sometimes I feel the Holy Spirit saying, Anika, that's not how you really feel. So when were you going to be honest? You know, and sometimes we have to be honest. God, I really want to fall into this temptation. God, I am struggling and this sin is really looking enticing. Because sin, let's just be honest, it is enticing. If it wasn't, we wouldn't be drawn to it, right? So God is saying, be honest with me about the struggle in prayer and then take the way of escape when I give it to you.